Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to go through an example of how to do ray diagrams and apply the thin lens equation to find the final image for an object subject to a two lens system. So I gave my class here a vote on whether what type of lenses and they they voted on double diverging. So we're going to assume that this first lens here has got a focal length of minus 20 centimeters. The second lens has got a focal length of minus 10 centimeters. We have an object sitting in front of this at a 10 centimeter position here. Now one thing to realize is this P would still be positive because that's a real object. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to work through this, try to figure out where the final image is, whether it's real, virtual, and what the final magnification is. So again, what are we looking for? We're looking for Q final and M final, total magnification of the system. So <clears throat> the way you work a two optical element problem, or a three for that matter, or a four is, is just one at a time. The important thing you got to realize though is you have to completely ignore the second element. So I'm going to work the first lens element here, completely ignoring, just pretend like that second one doesn't even exist. So first thing I'm going to do is a ray diagram for the object. And again, I like blue for these rays. It's such a pretty color. And the first ray I always do when I do a ray diagram is the parallel ray. So a ray that comes in parallel and hits this lens is going to be ref uh, refracted away from its focal length. So I've already got these points drawn. I did it you know, reasonably to scale. Here's F1 here. So this ray is going to leave oops, as if it came from F1. Now also this problem is going to get reasonably uh, complex. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do two principal rays to get through uh, the pictures. Three is nice, but you don't need three to image it. You really only need two. Okay, a ray that goes through the center is going to uh, go straight. So this ray is just going to keep on trucking. Now, before I moved my deal, I should have drawn the backtrack. Let me go back and do that. So that first ray, if I draw in the backtracking for it, will appear to have come back, you know, through F1 here. Now these rays intersect right here. So our image, which I'm going to go ahead and sketch here, our image is right there. Doesn't look like it's moved much. <clears throat> that image is a virtual image because it is formed from backtrack rays that don't actually exist. So I'm expecting the Q value to come out negative. The magnification should be positive because it's still upright. And it looks like maybe around 0.7 or 0.8. So let's go ahead now and apply thin lens equation to this. 1 over P. Now hopefully you've watched my previous video here. I'm just going to go ahead and put the numbers in. 1 over 10 centimeters plus 1 over Q equals 1 over the focal length. Now we're doing the first lens, which has a focal length of minus 20 centimeters. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, wait for one of my uh, assistants here to give me a value for Q. Negative what? Let's just do this in centimeters. So you said 0.15, negative 15 centimeters. Oh, we got a difference of an opinion. negative okay let's just call that negative 6.7 centimeters is good enough and yeah that looks about right because this was uh oh boy looks like we might be off just a little bit already my f1 was 20 oh yeah f1 is this distance so and then this is 10 yeah that looks spot on negative 6.7 centimeters let's go ahead and get a magnification now magnification is minus q over p and I went ahead and just left the units off. They cancel anyway. And you notice our magnification comes out positive at 0.67. So I'm going to go ahead and store this information right now. 
Magnification one is positive 0 0.67. All right, here is our image. Next step. The next thing we do is we <clears throat> do the second lens. And here's the key. You use the image of the first lens as the object for the second lens. So we're now going to treat this like an object. And in order to do that, we're going to need the object distance, which is the distance from here to here. Now, in this example I made up, they are 40 centimeters apart. This distance was 6.7 centimeters. So that distance, the total is now 46.7 centimeters. Now, here's a part that may cause some confusion. Sign conventions on P's and Q's, all right? The sign convention is this. P is positive if the object is real. Negative if it's imaginary, or I'm sorry, not imaginary, virtual. Q is positive when the image is real. And again, Q is virtual when it's, um, or Q is negative when it's virtual. Now, it's kind of a relative thing, though, relative to each lens. As far as this lens is concerned, this is a um, virtual image. However, you'll notice these light rays that are leaving over here to the right. I can actually draw a bunch more of them now. There's all kinds of rays leaving here that look like this. You know, there's some going, oops, let me draw them in blue. There's some going this way. I'm not going to draw all of them. There's some going this way. There's some going this way. All right? There's all kinds of rays leaving, leaving this lens in this configuration. Because remember, from this viewpoint, it appears that there's an object here giving up all of these rays. Is everybody clear on what I'm talking about? So, as far as this lens is concerned, this is a real object. Right? Because these light rays are actually back, do actually backtrack to this point. Basically, as far as this lens is concerned, it is equivalent to putting an object right here and getting rid of this lens. Therefore, the object distance for lens two is positive 46.7 centimeters. Right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw the ray diagram now. All right, so the ray diagram. And I think what I'll do here just to, to separate these off is use green rays here for the second ray diagram. Rays that come parallel will now leave as if they came from the focal point. Now keep in mind, you gotta have the right focal point. We're talking about F2, oops. I've, which is this one in this picture, oops. So this ray will leave in this direction. Right, next principal ray. I always like the one that goes through the center as well. A ray that goes through the center will just keep on a trucking. Now, going back to the first one here that I drew, this ray backtracks through here. So our final image, this is gonna be kind of hard to see, is very small. It's right about there where these rays backtrack. <clears throat> we'll notice now that the object was upright, the image is upright. So our magnification for the second lens should be positive. This is a virtual image because this is made from backtracked rays. So I'm expecting a negative value for Q. Let's go ahead and work the second problem. Do that right here. So one over P. I got to remember what that value was for P. Oh, uh, 46.7 centimeter. And again, this is positive, and I may go back and explain why here before this video is up, because I think that one's probably a tough one to understand. But plus one over Q, which we don't know, equals one over F, which is negative 10 centimeters. Would somebody please solve that for Q? I'm going to wait for one of my partners. 
negative 8.2 centimeters, which is looks fairly consistent with our expectations here. Remember that focal length number two is minus 10, so this distance is 10. That looks like about eight spot on. Okay, magnification number two, magnification for the second lens is going to be minus Q, which is 8.2 centimeters, over P, which was 46.7 centimeters. This comes out to be positive. Would somebody give me that number, please? positive 0.18 and again this looks consistent with expectations here because um, this object looks considerably smaller than this one the total magnification of the system is the product of the two magnifications so that's going to be positive 0.67 times positive 0.18 and I'm going to wait for somebody to give me a value positive 0.12. So for this system that we've set up, and this was just kind of made up, um, in fact I let you know students in the class here pick uh, some of the components of the system, the total magnification should end up to be around 0.12. The final image is 8.2 centimeters to the left of the second lens. Now it's important to interpret this correctly. It's not to the left, you know, this minus sign right here does not mean left, it means virtual. The plus and minuses on the P and Q's have to do with real versus virtual. So this negative sign means virtual image, which would mean to the left of this lens. Had the image been over to the right, these, it would be a real image. Right? So this minus sign means virtual, putting it to the left of this lens. Again, just you know, to point out the difference, had this been a mirror, a negative Q would mean a virtual image and that would put the object over to the right. right? So because this is a lens and a negative value for Q, meaning virtual image, that means that this image is to the left of this lens. So um, let me go back to, again, what I think is probably the toughest part to understand in this problem, and that is that plus sign right there. All right, so the P's and Q's, again, the plus and minuses, oops, are dictated by real or virtual. And as far as this lens is concerned, even though this was a virtual image for the first lens, right, you got to look at what's happening. That means the rays on the outgoing side of this lens are all such that they're equivalent to an object at this point. And these are real rays now as far as this lens is concerned. That makes this virtual image for lens one a real object for lens two. And then this is how the uh, problem worked out. So um, I hope this example helps demonstrate how to uh, do a lens problem for a, a, a double lens system, both with ray diagrams and um, thin lens equations. So have a great day.